got a fairly good sized piece of wood rigged. Rips made his face notch and rigged off roughly a 22 inch piece of white ash. It's roughly four to five foot long. So we're estimating because of the fact that we have green log weight charts that we've referred to, we're estimating that it weighs somewhere between five and 600 pounds. Okay, it's a fairly heavy piece. We are rigged from below, so there will be some fall before it comes into the rope. We've installed a dynamometer here between the sling and the porter app so that we can measure the force that we generate actually in the rope, okay, in one part of the rope. Now, at the rigging point, we've installed another dynamometer between the sling and the block, and the remote that I have in my hand will give us the numbers from down here. Now, we've set both dynamometers in peak hold. Peak hold will hold on to the greatest magnitude of force that it experiences and hold it so that we'll see what we get. This time, we're going to let the piece run. Norm's going to decelerate the piece with a porter wrap, okay? We have it rigged through a block so it'll run free and really Norm's going to be in control. If we were using a natural crotch and tree wraps, we'd have a lot more friction, actually a lot less control perhaps, very good possibility of much higher forces at the rigging point. So let's go ahead and, uh, and cut it off and we'll take a look at our force afterwards. Bore cutting requires proper training and experience, especially up in a tree. All right, stay clear. Releasing the strap. Rock and roll. Now at the dynamometer between the porter app and the sling at the base of the tree, we have a little less than half as much force as we generated at the rigging point. That's because we have two parts of the rope acting on the block and hence the dynamometer up above. Now keep in mind that we're going to have stretch going on here in this sling. We have some stretch going on above at the sling that Rip attached at that point. So there are variables here but there are also constants. And as you can see, we generated a little more than twice as much force above as we did down below. Now that we've read the force that we've generated, we've come off peak hold, and by going back to a regular measurement of weight on the lower dynamometer, we have the weight of the piece. And the piece weighs around 650 pounds. And really, the green log weight chart is not an exact science. If we're talking about straight fiber, we're gonna be closer, but this piece has got a couple of knots and it was a little swelled at the top. So again, we have to figure for that. Okay, this time we're going to snub the piece off. Or in other words, we're not gonna let it run. We've taken multiple wraps on the porter wrap and then I've tied one half hitch on the cleat pin and I'll add one more. We don't want the piece to run this time. Okay, last time we did decelerate the piece. We slowed it down as gradually as we could, but remember we stopped it before it reached the ground. That did account for some of the increase in force as opposed to had we let it run a little bit longer or perhaps even let the butt hit the ground and then the ground could have absorbed some of the energy. Sometimes that's justified. We can put wood around the base of the tree and so forth so that we're reducing the forces above. 